Hurricane Aaron has intensified again to a Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean and is now approaching the Bahamas, where we are anticipating at least tropical storm impacts. And then after this, it is expected to turn off to the north, where it will still bring impacts to areas like the United States and Bermuda. And there's even been some mandatory evacuation orders put in place for areas like North Carolina. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Aaron and what has changed over the last 24 hours. We'll begin with what's happening right now in the Atlantic Ocean and this right here is Hurricane Aaron. It did undergo an eyewall replacement cycle for about 16 hours yesterday and that eyewall replacement cycle was successful which has helped it to intensify again to a Category 4 hurricane because originally yesterday afternoon this was actually a Category 3 so it has intensified again. Maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour have been observed by hurricane hunters. The eye itself is not super clear but one other thing I want to point out is that this hurricane is way larger than before. This is double the size compared to what it was back over here near the Lesser Antilles in Puerto Rico. So the size has doubled and it's actually expected to even get bigger as it continues to move in the direction of North Carolina and Bermuda. So this thing's going to get a lot larger and that's another reason why we are likely going to see some impacts in areas like North Carolina. Another thing I want to point out is that this is awfully close right now to the Bahamas. This is again a much more westerly path than what most models have been showing, but this is something that we've been talking about literally all week long that we were expecting this to take a more westerly path with how intense this hurricane has been forecasted to get. And here's another view of Hurricane Aaron. This is the eye, which again does not look nearly as impressive as what it did a couple of days ago, but nonetheless still a very intense hurricane and tropical storm force winds are reaching very far to the west and south, which is one of the reasons why areas like the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas are currently under tropical storm warnings. But this is growing in size very quickly. This also look at visible satellite imagery. You can kind of see that eye. It's been getting more and more close, so it's not nearly as defined of an eye. I think later today, it will try to clear out again, but this is near the peak intensity that we are going to see for the remainder of Hurricane Aaron. I don't think it has much more of an opportunity to re-intensify. I think by tonight is the last time it'll have really any chance of getting any stronger than it currently is, which obviously right now it's strong enough as a hurricane. It is still a mid-grade Category 4 hurricane in the Western Atlantic Ocean. And this is another way to see how much larger Hurricane Aaron has gotten over the last few days, because this right here is when it was a Category 5 hurricane. We didn't even have tropical storm force winds really reaching into the Leeward Islands very much at all, but notice now how the wind field has gotten two to three times larger, including our hurricane force winds. Despite the winds not being nearly as high, the wind field has gotten larger, and that is because this hurricane is growing in size. So we are expecting this trend to continue, which is another reason why I do expect tropical storm force winds for areas like Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. Now let's talk more about the track and intensity and all the impacts that Hurricane Aaron is going to bring to areas like the United States, beginning with what it looks like right now and over the next few days. This will continue as a Category 4 hurricane just to the east of the Bahamas all the way through tomorrow morning. It is expected to weaken back into a Category 3 hurricane as we head into Tuesday afternoon and evening. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, this is expected to be pretty much parallel to North Carolina and South Carolina. And this is going to be a very close call. We are not expecting landfall in the United States, as we said in time and in time out at this point. However, this hurricane is going to be a lot closer than what I think people realize, because if it does take the more westerly path through this cone of uncertainty, that means where the eye of the hurricane is going to be going, it'll only be about 140 to 150 miles offshore from Cape Hatteras, which means that we will almost undoubtedly see tropical storm impacts in Cape Hatteras, especially with how large this hurricane is going to become over the next few days. Now, even if it take a more, took a more easterly path, which I do not think will happen, there would still at least be some impacts in Cape Hatteras, including including much higher wave heights. Now, across the board for the entire East Coast, we are anticipating dangerous rip currents throughout this week. You need to make sure if you're at the beach this week, look at the flag at the beach and make sure if you're going into the water that it is safe to do so. I think most areas are going to have problems with that, and especially since the wave heights are going to be much higher. We are talking about the potential for 15 to 20 foot waves, even just barely offshore back over in North Carolina and Virginia. So this is shaping up to be a very dangerous week if you have any plans of going to the the beach anywhere from Miami all the way back into Maine. This is something that, again, you want to make sure that you're taking into account across the East Coast. Now, as we just alluded to, Hurricane Aaron is going to cause some big problems along the East Coast when it comes to rip currents and wave heights. And these are the forecasted wave heights over the next 90 hours, which is basically over the next four to five days. And notice how we could have wave heights as high as 110 feet offshore here. This is obviously not going to be impacting the United States, but those waves in general are crazy. Most crews lines have
have canceled going anywhere near Hurricane Aaron because of how high these waves are going to be. But back over on the East Coast, we are still anticipating from Miami all the way back into New England, still some really large waves. This is good for surfing, but otherwise it is very dangerous to be in the waters. We are talking about waves anywhere from 10 upwards of even 30 to 40 feet in some areas, and there have now officially been evacuation orders issued for Hatteras Island and Ocracoke Island in North Carolina. We are expecting that Highway 12 will be impassable for days near Hatteras Island, so definitely make sure that you're taking these evacuation orders seriously. We are going to have some really big waves, especially with the flow of this hurricane and our winds coming from the east, and that's going to help to crash a lot of the waves right into Cape Hatteras, so definitely make sure that you're ready for some really big surf and really unswimmable conditions here in North Carolina. So here's a simulated forecast on exactly where Hurricane Aaron is going to go over the next several days, beginning with what is happening Tuesday night. This will still just be to the northeast of the Bahamas, and then by Wednesday, it'll begin to turn to the north. And notice how some of the outer bands will be reaching Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. We are going to likely see tropical storm force winds in these areas. I'm currently forecasting our maximum wind gusts to get near 70 miles per hour in Cape Hatteras. So it'll definitely be pretty windy on uh, late Wednesday and early Thursday. And then as we go into Friday, this continues to move to the northeast and will weaken in the northern Atlantic Ocean. What's really crazy, honestly, is that this is near catastrophe situation for either the United States or Bermuda, because right now it's going literally in between the two. It could not be much closer than this to having a catastrophic situation for either one or two countries here. So this is definitely, honestly, probably one of the best paths that we could have, even though there will be impacts up and down the East Coast. This could be a much worse situation if this hurricane were 100 miles further west or east. And here's another look at the future radar back over in the western Atlantic Ocean as we head into Wednesday night. Hurricane Aaron is going to be awfully close to North Carolina as we get into late Wednesday night and early Thursday morning. Wave heights are going to really rapidly increase as we go into the overnight hours into Thursday, which is when Highway 12 will likely become impassable near Hatteras Island. And then eventually as we go into Thursday afternoon and evening, this will be turning out to sea. But that does not mean the impacts will not be felt beyond Thursday and Friday as we are anticipating the waves to remain high all the way through Saturday and dangerous rip currents will likely continue through the weekend. So if you have any plans to go to the beach, definitely make sure that you're staying safe. And these are the maximum wind gusts that we are anticipating out of Hurricane Aaron and right over in Cape Hatteras is where we could see wind gusts as high as 60 to 70 miles per hour on late Wednesday and early Thursday. And up and down the East Coast, we are likely going to see wind gusts anywhere from 30 to 45 miles per hour. That goes anywhere from about South Carolina back into Southern New England, though that's not really tropical storm force winds. If you're right on the beach, you're definitely going to feel the highest of the winds because there's literally nothing stopping the wind over a big body of water like the Atlantic Ocean. Be prepared for isolated power outages if you're back over in Cape Hatteras. Have flashlights ready to go and also a generator ready to go just in case if you're not under a mandatory evacuation order. If you are under a mandatory evacuation order, I would be evacuating. And the tropics are not done with just Hurricane Aaron because we have another area of development in the main development region that has right now about a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. This will be tracking towards the Lesser Antilles as we get to the late half of this week and eventually into the weekend. This does have a chance of developing, but the biggest thing is, is if this does take a more northwesterly and honestly northerly path, kind of like with what Aaron's doing, it's going to have a very low success rate of actually developing because Hurricane Aaron is churning up all that cold water from underneath, which is cooling down our ocean waters right now north of areas like Puerto Rico. So this is going to struggle a lot more if it goes to the north. However, if it goes more to the west or even goes more down to the south into the Caribbean or even up the greater Antilles, it will likely develop at least into a tropical storm, if not hurricane, because a lot of our ocean waters in these other areas are still very favorable. Now, it's going to come down to wind shear as well. If we have a lot of wind shear in these areas, a hurricane is going to struggle to develop, but that is something that we'll have to worry about later on once a tropical wave actually develops here. And guess what? There is a risk of severe weather today in the United States. We do have two slight risks of severe weather in place, one of which includes Chicago, southern Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, and another one back over in the Dakotas, also into Nebraska and northwestern Kansas, where the biggest concern will be isolated damaging winds and some large hail. There is a low chance of an isolated tornado this afternoon back over in Wisconsin, northeast Iowa, and northern Illinois, so I have ways to receive warnings. This threat will taper down by around 7 8 o'clock tonight, and I do want to point out that we actually did have two tornadoes yesterday in northern Iowa, so we may see another one here today with a very similar environment, but overall, I think the risk will be mostly wind. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have another video tomorrow, so click the bell icon so you're notified if we have another forecast. Otherwise, we'll see you guys all again in the next video, and stay safe.